We tanned our walleye here in the Pro One fish, fish and Bird Tan. Uh, we're just going to lay some paper towels down. We want to get this skin really nice and dry. So we'll lay some paper towels down and we'll put some on top and we'll just dry any excess moisture out of this skin here. Now before I actually go put any glue on this fish, I do like to do a little bit of a pre-fit just to make sure everything's going to fit pretty close to the way I want. Now we carved it to the size so we should be very close to what we have. But to kind of mark it here we're going to put the skin on. Since I did a, a dorsal cut on this one, we're just going to kind of lay it. We're going to match the paired fins on the belly. And we're going to kind of match the top. We're going to match the vent. We're just going to kind of get those to where they should be. And we'll kind of be able to tell if our seam's going to close or not. I mean, as you can see, we're pretty much we're pretty much right there. There's not much much gap in between here. If there is any gap, we can always rebuild the scales once it's together, but we really don't want much gap on when, when we're doing a fish seam like this. If it's a one-sided fish, we can get away with leaving a gap. That, side's usually going to be against the wall and it gives you a little bigger fish look so most people aren't going to complain about that anyhow. Glue it up and get this skin all set on here. Now I'm going to be using the McKenzie paste. Uh, with When you're mounting fish you got to be careful on which glue you use. You want to make sure that they're compatible with like a dry preserve or anything like that. If you use one that's not it'll end up just gelling up and it won't actually it'll cause more issues than actually holding the fish down you'll end up having lumps under the skin and it won't right so we're just going to take our gloved hands uh, we're going to cut the belly of this mannequin we'll set it on there we just want to make sure that we are coating the belly not accidentally coating the back so we don't get glue all over but we'll kind of coat this we'll avoid the fin pockets a little bit but We'll end up scooting some out, some glue out through those holes anyhow, but we just want it to be as clean as possible for now. Once we have that, we're going to kind of roll our skin up, and then we're going to just put a couple pins here in the bottom. I'm going to put, I'm going to kind of put one pin up here where the third latch would be, and then I'm going to kind of mark my, my pair of fins. I'm going to put a pin into my, in the middle of them, I'm going to put one in the vent, then I'll put one in the front and the back of the anal fin. That'll kind of hold this belly skin where we want it to be, and it'll allow us to roll the skin up over the back so that we're not distorting it too much, making sure the belly stays where we need the belly to stay. Now we're just going to kind of take and we're going to roll this glue up, up to the back. We just kind of want to make sure everything's pretty close to where we want it on the back because you can kind of distort these scales as we go so you, you want to kind of work your fins you kind of know where your fins are you want to work your fins to where your fins are you want to kind of make sure your top of your head's where your top of your head should be but we're going to roll all the all the glue up we're going to try to work any air bubbles any pockets of glue up we don't want we just want just pretty much a skim coat of glue here underneath because we just pretty much want the form that we carved is what we want our body to be looking like so work that all up once it's all worked up we're just going to pin we're going to pin a couple spots just so that it it holds and then we're going to end up actually stitching this thing all up together now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew from the tail fin to the soft dorsal fin. I'm just going to sew that little bit of area up for now. I'm just going to use a baseball stitch and some fishing line and that'll hold it together. I do like I like to sew. I just find that it holds the skin close together on, on them. If this is a one-sided down the back fish 
I usually don't sew them. I just kind of let the glue hold. But on this one I will be sewing. Now before I sew the rest of this up, I do want to work a little bit here on this head area. I want to get the skin placed where I need it to be placed. Um, those bones that we left in when we skinned them, I'm going to have to carve a little bit of foam out so that I can tuck them in so that they sit where they should be on the skin. So I kind of mark my, take my pins up to where they should be. I'll carve my, I'll carve where the bones out. And then I'll go ahead and pin everything else in the whole way. Yeah, if you would have a cast head or a replica or anything, uh, you can kind of see some of these bones in there. So you just want to kind of make sure we have them lined where they should be. Uh, most of them, you're, most of them are going to be hidden by the gill plate. Uh, you do see the one just above the above the flap on the top of the gill plate. So you just want to kind of make sure everything's aligned about where you need them to be. And then we'll pin this the whole way around and we'll be ready to sew the rest of this thing up. Now I will add a little bit more glue up here in the front. So I didn't have quite enough here. I mean you can kind of you can kind of tell if you need more glue or not, but I'll put a little more glue in the front. I'll work it out. You can I'll kind of make sure that the lateral line is lined up pretty close. And then I'll go ahead and sew the top of this fish all up. Now that I have it all sewn up, I'm going to kind of need to work any of these glue spots or air pockets in here. It's easy to move this skin, so we kind of got to watch. Watch. We just want to kind of get everything where we have it. And that will really, we'll really get these pretty close today, but as it dries we want to really make sure that we don't leave any of these bubbles or we'll see a little pox in our skin of glue and stuff like that so we definitely don't want to see one thing I like to do I like to take these scale rollers and I'll kind of roll it along the skin it just kind of helps pop the scales kind of back into their pockets and it works any any air bubbles any glue bubbles that we'd have in there it works them all out so I I find it definitely does help me get a smoother skin without accidentally missing a glue pocket or something and leaving that in there. Now I'm just going to stick a couple pins in here and I'm going to hang this skin up until I get the head set and ready to go. At this point we're now ready to set this head. We also had this in the in the tan solution but I still end up coating everything with borax. It just helps to dry dry everything a little bit better. It dries the inside of these cheeks and dries the gills a little bit. But we're going to mix up a little bit of um, fish filler mache. We're just going to kind of work these cheeks in. Work it into these cheeks. Work it into the bottom. We just kind of want to have a nice even cheek. We don't want to overfill it. If we overfill it we can just kind of press our finger on it and smooth it up. Uh, we can poke a little bit of a hole just to kind of prevent any air gaps there and just help us to fill in a little bit better at the bottom on that but we're gonna just fill both of these cheeks up with that and then we're gonna put a little bit behind the eye set and then we will also tuck a little bit in the kind of the brain cavity from behind. Once we have the cheeks filled, the head filled in and everything smoothed out the way we want it to be, what we're going to end up doing, we're going to sew the back of this, the back skin of the, in this mouth. We're going to sew it all together. We're going to leave a long string and we're going to try to use as long of a needle. So when we put it on our form, we're just going to kind of end up pulling it the whole way through. But we're just going to kind of take our needle and we're going to do our best to kind of bunch the bunch the skin together so when we pull it it kind of gives a natural back of the throat look. With that long needle here we kind of have our head carved out where our throat latches or our throat's going to end up sitting back into there so we're just going to kind of work this needle back in as far as we can go and we're just going to end up trying to grab them here and we're going to pull them 
as we pull that string we're just going to kind of work this head into the shape that it needs to be in then now in order to kind of keep this head where we want it to be on the top of this head I'm just going to put two upholstery pins and it'll kind of hold the shape of that until we get the other pins in the bottom of this we're really just making sure that that head doesn't juke down and it fits in a natural look on this now I do kind of like to put a piece of wax paper or a piece of parchment paper in between the gills and the body if I don't I find that uh, once the skin dries then I it kind of dries into the into the fish skin and when I remove this head to attach it later it kind of makes it a little tricky now when I'm putting this parchment paper, wax paper, or whatever you're putting behind here, on here, I'm also kind of pulling these, the rays underneath of the gill plates, I'm pulling them to where they belong, and I'm just pinning those down with T-pins. That'll just kind of hold our head in the shape that we want. Now that I got everything pretty much pinned where it wants, where I need it to, I want to kind of work on the inside of this mouth a little bit. I'll just pull my needle a little bit that I have that I left long in it. I'm gonna take a regulator needle. I'll shape the gills a little bit, kind of get them where I need it to, and then I'm just gonna kind of take this big needle here and press it into the top just to hold the top of this inside of the mouth where I, where I want it to be, and that'll get me pretty close. I'm At this point, we're gonna be pretty close to where we want to let this thing dry. I'll kind of take my finger over it and go ahead and work work over it, make sure I didn't have any any bumps that I left on here by accident or anything that I might have missed. I'm going to put two pins in the back of this and I'm going to let it hang overnight. I'm going to kind of repeat the process tomorrow. I'm going to go over it, just make sure nothing's, no bumps or any bubbles, glue bubbles or air bubbles or anything are in this skin. So we're just going to probably let this thing dry for... I'd say probably three to four weeks just to just to make sure everything's dry and then we'll be ready for the rebuild of this head and then we'll be able to add some color back into this and make it look like a pretty nice walleye.